We're here to talk about Mortal Kombat 30 years. I know you've been talking about this for 30 years up to this point. You know, I'm lucky enough to say that I was there in the arcades when the first Mortal Kombat came out. And so obviously this has a lot of nostalgia to me and it's I really appreciate the fact that, you know, we are friends that can talk about stuff because, you know, little young Brian playing Mortal Kombat and Ed's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to tweak this. I'm going to put this in like who would have thought that's how crazy the Internet is. But, you know, I, I just want to say, first of all, thanks for your time, Ed. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'd like 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 we were just saying, I uh, I wish we could uh, um, hang out more, but I'm sure uh, we'll we'll have an event or something like that to to, to catch up with. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I know that you you talked about MK30 and I know you're a busy guy, but I was wondering if you could like just take a little moment to breathe. And when you hear that 30 years of Mortal Kombat, what what do you think about what what you know, what what comes to mind? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is it doesn't feel like 30 years. It feels it feels like, you know, like 29 years. No, it, feel, it feels <laughs> like, you know, a lot more recent uh, than that but and then at the same time when i'm looking at some old video footage of us working on the game i i look at my face and i compare and i go yeah it's been about 30 years i i, I could believe it so but, you look uh, I, honestly you look good man you look good 30 years working that hard you look good bro yeah thanks i i had um you know there have been so many kind of uh chapters of mortal Kombat, the arcade games and then the the 3D kind of PlayStation 2 era, and then the more recent ones, 9, X, and 11 have been, so it's kind of like separated, I don't know, maybe roughly into 10-year segments, but uh, so it feels like almost like like college or something, you know, freshman year, sophomore year, junior year. You know what I love when you say that? Because there's times where I remind myself where all the things I've been able to do, like what would literally high school version of me think and so yeah. for you to say it feels like college i mean those are some of our most vibrant years which is a testament to just how you and the team have been able to keep mortal Kombat fresh after 30 years and so i think i really appreciate that you, that spirit is still in you right kind of like that young that young feeling of like oh anything we can do we can try and you post a lot of videos online and like i think people might not realize like the fact that you said that that that's kind of feeling and emotions are still within you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have um, when we started the first game, it was only four people on the whole team, right? Which is which is crazy when you think about it. Now it's in the hundreds, and so certainly in our studio, there are team members who weren't even born when Mortal Kombat came uh, came out, and and so. We have such a, a wide range of, of teammates in terms of age and experience and, and, and all that, that all the fresh ideas keep coming in, right? And, and it's, that's, that's one of the best parts about this team is just our, our wide range of not only ages, but, you know, types of players and, you know, quite a diverse group of, uh, of, of, of individuals. And I think that's a big part of what keeps Mortal Kombat um, fresh and feeling like a new a new game every time. I think it's also a testament to you understanding, like, you know, I'm not calling out any names, but sometimes there's a lot of ego involved in like this is this was your baby, right? Like you saw this from its very start. So the ability to kind of let the creative reins go to a certain degree and let other people infuse their ideas to bring this new blood. That doesn't happen often. I mean, I think that's sometimes why sometimes franchises don't carry on. Again, 30 years is in any industry is incredible. In the gaming industry, oh my gosh, right? Yeah. You might have a good run for like five years, but 30 years. So, you know, I know I'm giving you your flowers, Ed, but I wanted to like at least take a little bit of moment of this time just to celebrate what you have accomplished and what your team has because, you know, you hear compliments a lot, but it is really incredible when you think about it. It it is that is that is one of the things we're most proud of. Certainly, is the fact that thirty years later, our, our latest games have been our most successful games, which is which is crazy. I don't know how many game franchises can say that, um, but at the same time, there have been so many of our fans who've been with us the whole ride. You know, which which is crazy. So, it, you know, like you, if you were playing the game in the arcade, 
and you still know it now and you still have the the, the recent games um that's pretty cool that's pretty cool i think uh from our standpoint what what were as a young ed boone and john tobias and crew what what were kind of your hopes and kind of your dreams of this game when you're first making i mean we know the stories of how it originally was intended to be kind of like a fighting game around jean-claude van damme and things happen and that changed but what were your when you were putting this together like I, I reference, I'll put some links in our video here of the Twitter posts that you've put that have just kind of really talked about some of the inner workings. But as you're as you're putting this game together, like what were your hopes at that time? Our hopes was at first to to make a um, a game really quick. Uh, the, the midway had like a um, literally an assembly line that we had to keep feeding games to, right? And then they saw like a hole in the schedule, and so they asked us, could we do a game in like eight months? And the four of us, foolishly enough, you know, four kids in their 20s uh, decided, yeah, we could do it. We, we, have, <laughs> we have a lot of time on our hands. And so we, you know, just quickly, really uh, quickly built up a, um, a prototype game. And um, at first, like you said, it was going to be a Jean-Claude Van Damme game. As a matter of fact, I have I have a video I'm going to be releasing pretty soon that is our pitch to Jean-Claude Van Damme. Right. Like we have him in the uh um you know kind of kind of mocked up in the game and this this was before johnny cage right so he was going to be that guy and um so it was all very much in a rush there wasn't a big expectation coming you know thinking oh if they're going to do it in eight months you know how how great could it be and everything just seemed to fall into place so once we got I remember when we got the uppercut going, the, the first uppercut, you know, the big sound, the blood splash, the, the 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 victim flying up in the air, landing on the ground. They just felt good. I remember everybody coming into my office and can we see this uppercut everybody's talking about? And that really started getting a feel for us of like, well, we might be onto something special here and something um, that's not just this filler game. And as time went on, everybody was more and more excited about it. I had to be kicking people out of my office more often. You know, you always, it's a good sign, but when you got to say, hey, you know, you're going to have to leave. I got to work on this. And um, when that started happening and people in the studio were asking about it, that's when we knew something was, uh, something was connecting there. I, I love, you know, to this day, Yes, people talked about like, how about externally mainstream? They're like, oh, this game is so gory. Obviously, you have a moment in history where Mortal Kombat significance influenced the ESRB, right? I mean, that you changed, you literally changed the industry. But you you look at Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, and throughout that visceral thing you're talking about, it's hard to capture that in a game. Games hadn't captured that, like that, that feeling, that rawness, that intensity. Just yeah. you get a reaction that you can't describe. And you guys have been able to hold hold that. So I think it's it's really cool. And it wasn't just the uppercut. Like there's so many moments in the game, in your very first game that you're able to capture. And so again, that that DNA lives through um 30 years later. I do, I love how you're talking about how you guys were kind of creating this game because you know, I'll reference some of these clips, but it seems like with the clips that you've released, did you even know some of the moves these characters were doing, or were you like figuring stuff out? on the fly in this studio as you had someone you know carlos piscina on stage like did you even it just seemed like you're experimenting a lot absolutely um one thing that we don't uh, when, when you think about it um there weren't that many moves that you know special moves that were were that we um actually captured right like Sonya's leg grab, Scorpion spear, those were moves that um, we actually captured on purpose. But a lot of them came long after we had uh, videotaped the, the actors, right? Um, and they were just using existing frames of animation. So we'd put something there. You know, Johnny Cage's shadow kick was just his sidekick, his sidekick. And then we just made a whole bunch of duplicates of it. And then it's just this really cool effect. I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> and um, so so a lot of these things were just con constructed. Um, Sonya square wave punch. We never captured that. That was long after the fact. So 
again, it was a, a lot of it was very spontaneous, very, and again, keeping in mind, this is, you know, four guys in their twenties kind of set loose, right? Like, like do what you want, you know, just make something cool. And that's why it's so visceral. We grew up in the eighties watching, uh, you know, uh, you know, action movies and, 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 you know, enter the dragon, star Wars, everything like, and so it's just a bunch of kids making a game. What, what would be cool to, to a bunch of guys in their, tw- in their twenties. That's, that's kind of what Mortal Kombat is. <laughs> The, the other thing that maybe isn't talked about as much is because in game development, I mean, you guys had really limited resources, memory that was available in these consoles, and you had to make really like tough or judicious decisions about what was in the game. You talk about even just taking up seven frames of animation for the poses for Scorpion's pose to look different yeah. from Sub-Zero's uh, pose. So can you maybe explain to us and maybe even the the newer generations like it was not easy to develop like you don't have un- now these days i mean the consoles are incredible yeah but with the resource you're working at that time h- how did you go about like kind of navigating that you know what were the actual specs that you had to work around with yeah if you and, remember and everything that that we were we were doing like there, there was no cd roms back then there was no hard drives everything was like on eprom chips and each one of those cost money so every time we added memory that added cost to the game and it lowered the profits of the game. And so it was all a, a constant negotiation. And, and that was so instilled in us that when we came up with a new move, we were just, you know, counting our resources. Like you said, when, when we decided to do Scorpion and Sub-Zero with different stances, it was like, okay, that's seven frames of anime. Yeah, that's worth it. That that's, that's worth it to have them have different stances. And that was a big part of the, development of the design of this game was make it fit in this box you know you don't have unlimited space for your ideas so it was ideas that could fit in the box you know scorpion's teleport move was using his jump punch move it, there was no extra frames of animation for it um there was there was there was quite a bit of reusing of frames and images um just so you know, because code is this big, art is this big, mm-hmm. and it was just a, a management of that thing. So that was a big part of it. But that was that was always the case with with arcade games back in the day. It was it was make something really cool that would fit in a box. When consoles came along, CD ROMs uh, came along, and hard drives came along. You know, make a room <laughs> in this football field, and and <laughs> make a game in this football field, and and that would be. Um, uh, a lot more, uh, a little more breathing room to do it. Now, I know you you shot a lot of moves and some made it to the game. I know they're sure, I'm surely, I'm pretty sure there's stuff that didn't make it into the original yeah. game. And I mean, it's you're, been you're, years. You're, you're scary how much you're reading my mind. I'm literally in the process of making a video of unused um, uh, special moves that we, we we captured in the game. But finish your, finish your sentence, sorry. Well, this is, I know you're going to release a video and the video speaks more than you know, it goes on with some of these words, but maybe could you talk about one of those moves that didn't make it into the game oh, amongst yeah. the many that you really, it was like, it was one of the moves that you're like, oh, I really want to, but at the end of the day, you had to let it go. But was there a move for a certain character that hasn't seen the light of day yet, which you will show later um, that, you, that you could talk about? Yeah, yeah. Um, Kano had this moves with his knives where he would kind of spin them in a, like a helicopter almost, right? It's a side view and he's kind of spinning them going to cut up the guy we we grabbed a whole bunch of frames but that would have been you know 10 15 frames which you can laugh at today but back then that was you know that was a deal breaker basically like it's just too many frames of animation and so we didn't do it um so so there's that one and um i'm going through some of our old uh tapes and just kind of looking at a lot of stuff going, wow, we never did that, but we never did that. We never, and I thought that'd make a cool video. And uh, so I'm trying to piece something together showing that. That That's amazing. So, you know, you talk about some of these frames of animation. I mean, how, ma- how, ma- how many frames of animation were you actually set on allocating to each character? Because, right, we, we talk now like people are playing games at 120 frames per second, like a game that's running with all these things happening. You had specific characters and you said 15 was too much. So do you remember roughly what was budgeted per character for how many frames of animation they could even use before you're like, okay, that that's the threshold. 
I don't think I remember the exact number, but I know that we had, you know, we had kind of assigned a certain amount for the characters, a certain amount for the backgrounds, certain amount for the special effects, the little blood things and 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 whatnot. Um, so a bunch of the characters had kind of common moves like the stance, the punches, the kicks, the the jump flips and all that. And uh, that was kind of like the the template that everybody started with. And then after that, it was, OK, there are two or three mm. special moves. Some characters only had two, two, two special moves. This is way back in the day. Um, so it was it wasn't really like frame counting as much as um, just an overall allotted space. Um, again, some of the big characters, they would take up a lot more images you know goro has a very limited number of attacks because he's so big on the screen every frame is probably you know on the order of double of what let's say a normal character would be um shang sung's very limited his movement's very limited just because we did him last and and we used up all our memory <laughs> so it's like like i mean i can't tell you how much how many hours we spent uh john and i spent just trimming frames oh we need okay look grab, grab this one frame out of this character one mm. frame out of this one th out of this okay now we have enough to make a special move for for this guy it was like um it was it was very uh, a, a big part of it was just doing the math of what's going to fit in the game you know we talked about johnny cage and i'm not trying to get you to talk about all the special moves that you're going to show in this montage but johnny cage has always been my favorite he has the cockiness the brashness um, you know, the cheese, he's the cringe, he's the cheese, he's he's all that, he's the machismo as well. Um, you haven't really released many things, at least video-wise, for his character, but were there any moments that stood out during the capture sessions for you, specifically Johnny Cajun? I know he's roughly based on John Claude, but I feel like some of his campiness comes from you, like to make right, like I don't know, maybe you can confirm this or not, but he has such so much camp to him, but I love it. Yeah, the, the Johnny Cage, um, there, there was a subtle thing that that Jean Claude Van Damme did in Bloodsport, the stance where he would like lift his legs up, this kind of like this weird like, and we had that in in the game. I have video footage of when he had that move, but at the end of the day, at some point, Johnny Cage lifting his legs in like a cocky way took a lower priority than adding the special move for Sonya or someone like that, right? Because when we did Sonya, she was the last character. And we were like, okay, we got to fit everything, um, you know, squeeze that character into the game. So some of Johnny Cage's like nuances didn't make the cut. Um, a lot of the characters, you know, they had intros, you know, Liu Kang used to come out. This is one I'm definitely going to show. Liu Kang used to come out and he was wearing like this, uh, this, this jacket that was very much like, like Bruce Lee would have or something like that. And he took it off and he did this really cool flourish and all that. And uh, and it looked great. It looked like like very cool. But at the end of the day, it was fluff and we needed another special move in the game. So it was kind of mm. um, fluff versus gameplay. And in that case, gameplay one. Do you, now with all the resources that they have at your disposal, do you do you feel like there are any limits? I mean, not, back then there was limitations well, you know, and you have a huge team and everyone is now allocated. So, I mean, it's crazy to just think four people versus hundreds, right? Or over a hundred. Um, are there limitations or anything that you guys have thought at, thought about can at least be tried? And then if it lands, it doesn't. If it if it does, you keep it. I, you know, how, how is it now? Just kind of the, the, the options you have, does it make it harder or easier creatively? It's, it's much harder now. Um, and there are, programmers on our team who are way better than I ever was. There are artists on our team who are infinitely have a better eye than I do. There are animators, there are, and um, all of them do their job better than I do. And even they are challenged with, you know, believe it or not, memory constraints. You know, the PlayStation or Xbox, their discs, as big as they are, it's finite. And we have really complex, high resolution uh, character models. So they fill up that space quick. We are, we have, if you've seen our story mode, you know, we have full motion video, you know, two hours of video that has to be crammed on there. And so there's, there's a, 
it is still a constant um a constant negotiation with uh with with the the memory gods that we have to uh, <laughs> we have the, to the memory gods will always be there right <laughs> they never will go away they'll get bigger <laughs> but they're never going to go away um the other thing is the are the style of mortal kombat was again at the time it it blew people's minds i remember right the the lifelike sprite based but lifelike looking characters was that a deliberate intention from the start or was it a resource thing or is a style that you had talked about before and said this is how we're going to make our game look different and feel different well it was kind of like the midway style midway had done a number of games with these digitized graphics narc was one of them um terminator 2 we did a, ter- a, a game based on terminator 2 arcade game as a shooter it was digitized graphics narc um Smash TV and and a couple other ones were were more of hand drawn, but the whole digitized look was the midway style. So when we said we're going to do a fighting game, we always assumed that it would be with real characters. What what changed with Mortal Kombat was on Narc the characters were this big on the screen, on Mortal Kombat they were this big. So you, it's like moving the camera closer, and so suddenly they're that much more real. Nuances were picked up that the actors were doing that were you know, subtleties that just make it feel that much more mm. like these are people on, on the screen. These aren't drawings. These are people. And that was a big part of the connection too. suddenly the players were attached to the, these characters more. Uh, John Tobias wrote little backstories based on them that he just kind of like put together. We put it in while it was in the attract mode and players just connected with that. They were just like, Lu Kang, and then they read, you know, he's a Shaolin monk, and it was like, this is, that's me, you know, that's me, I, I want to play as this guy, and there was this weird connection that I don't think any of us could have predicted was going to be such a big part of the game, was this um, realism, you know, everybody would say, you know, the, the characters are real on the screen, and that was, uh, that was like lightning, like magic kind of striking, right, um, nobody could have, could have predicted that. No one also could have predicted, and I know everyone asked you about this, but we'll talk about it a different way. No one could have predicted fatalities. No. So, <laughs> you know, at that time, every your people are looking to stand out in an industry where everyone's coming out with a new, you know, new game. How, honestly, where what was the first seeds of fatalities? And what I what I have to tell people that makes me laugh all the time is like, you and I have known each other for a while now. And we were fortunate to take a tour of your studios over in Chicago. And when we left, my girlfriend, now fiance, said, he seems like such a normal guy. How does he come up with all this weird, crazy stuff for fatalities? And it makes me like, I think about like, dude, because it is tongue in cheek, but it's also pretty brutal. So where, what was the original seed that you can remember that the fatalities start at? Because I mean, that is one of the iconic, you know, parts of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. Shang Tsung, the the final uh, boss character in the game, he had this move where when you when when he would defeat you, he had a big sword and he would come out and he cut your head off basically, and your head would blop off and fall to the ground. And um, that was based on an old game from the '80s that I used to play called Barbarian, where somebody would actually cut your head off, and I I I just couldn't believe I saw somebody get their head cut off in a video game. And this is the 80s, right? Mm-hmm. And so we were kind of duplicating that in a sense. But um, so we had every character fall to their knees and then fall to the ground. And we just removed their head. And it was like that. And um, so it was going to be just the boss. Um, just as goofing around one time, um, we made Johnny Cage duck down and uppercut the guy. And then we just use the head animation, use the falling down one. And, but you could do it. And when we put that in, it was almost like testing it or a joke or let's, let's shock, whatever. Everybody lost their mind in the studio. Half the people were saying, you can't do that. And the other <laughs> half was going, you can't not do that. And so it was one, once that just kind of, again, it, it's, it's hard to explain. It's when everybody's talking about it and when everybody's kind of like this buzz, you know, you're onto something. And so we finished doing that one for, for Johnny Cage. And then we just started saying, let's start making these. So we had Kano, you know, and, and that's a cliche. We, we'd always see, you know, oh, he can rip your heart out and show it to you before you die. That was like this, 
this martial arts movie cliche that we wanted to kind of uh duplicate right and um we knew that there was something really special about that um a lot of it was also due to street fighter uh street fighter would make you all dizzy and that drove me insane when when you go dizzy and you get a free hit on me so we moved that to the end of the fight and that's when the opportunity was okay you already lost the fight so you're dizzy and the guys coming like okay time to put on a show and that um that's i think that's really when the game became mortal Kombat. is when that feature was put in there along with all the crazy blood the realistic visuals these realistic characters the super fast gameplay right it played a lot faster than uh most games out there it just kind of pieced together it, it's it's magic you know we're, we're 30 years later I'm curious, what has surprised you maybe the most after all these years, whether it's the game, the love, the community, the the different mock-ups, the art? I mean, what has kind of surprised you or really impressed you that you really enjoy, you know, 30 year, years later after making that game originally? What surprised and enjoy for me, and I would I would say for everybody on the team, is the fact that everybody's still along on this ride with us. Um, some people literally, um, having played it in the arcades and they're still with us, you know, uh, playing our games <laughs> and, um, or others who were born in, you know, let's say 20 years ago and missed the first few games and never experienced the game in the arcade and they're still with us. So the, the, the biggest surprise, the biggest, you know, the, 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 the best part of it is everybody coming along and sticking with us on this ride. Mm, that, that I mean, that shows just how much you appreciate, you know, just the community and the, just what you've built. Right. I mean, the, you, it doesn't exist without fans were kind of reciprocating. And then you kind of reciprocating back like, Oh, we got another one for you. And they're like, yeah, we want more, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, just, it's just like a relationship. It is. <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> uh, we, we absolutely listen to what, um, what uh you know what the writing on the wall is in terms of what people want to see what characters they want to see come back and all that so look i know you're active on twitter and sometimes when you go on twitter you caught you cause some trouble ed you, you mortal Kombat trends randomly out of nowhere i think sometimes it trends and you'll write like why is this trending did i did i miss something right i mean that's that's kind of a fun yeah. phenomena in itself so yeah i kind of wanted to touch upon and i'm not asking to remember these tweets i'll refresh your memory a little bit but um there's been some fun things that i was hoping we'll see if we can get some answers for you from you but you did tease like you you threw out a video of all the different character select screens because sometimes fans generate content and they send it your way and then you you retweet and push it out and you said you teased that you knew what your favorite character select screen is, but you never outright, from what I call, recall, oh yeah, answered yeah. that question, right? It yeah. was someone that put a bunch of character select screens on and you said, I know what my favorite one is. Yeah, but MK11, MK11 was my favorite. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. And yeah. what sticks out about it for you? The close-up, the close-up uh, the close of the, the the character's faces when you when you choose it. Over the years, we've had, you know, in the... Uh, the, the cursors on the box, you see a, a version of your character just kind of animating or something like that. But this one, we just started to move it up close. I, I loved everything about uh, the MK11 player select screen. It was just um, my favorite. So clean, so sharp. So uh, um, our, our UI team, our character uh, development team, our animators, um, they, they just nailed it, knocked it out of the park. Okay. Good, good answer. We got the answer. And I, I agree. You know what? I also find it amazing that after all these years, it's like, no, the newest one is like, and you gave those reasons. Sometimes you you might think some people are a little nostalgic. You love them all. Like they're all your kids. Oh, someone's going to be like, oh, the original, because that's where it started. But, you know, 11 definitely feels different. And also the fidelity of the graphics, right? Just everything, you know, like you said, the visceral feeling or the response that you get when you see something like this and how it's changed over the years. It it's super cool. Um, obviously, I'm not going to ask you questions that you can't answer like, hey, when's the next game coming? But oh, I, I would have told you, but go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Too late. I missed the golden opportunity. Eddie. I missed the golden opportunity. 
<laughs> um, someone, someone asks you, you know, oh, characters, what's coming? And they ask like, oh, can you tell me of smokes in the next game? And you alluded to the fact that, well, if I told you this character, it doesn't mean as he's in this game. And you did say, I ha we have multiple pots stirring. Now, I'm not asking you to tell us what those games are, but I'm curious because um, that would that would imply maybe that there's more than one game. Can is that safe to say at least? Can well, we at least imply that? First of all, I said I have more multiple pots on the stove, not stirring. Okay, so there's a difference. Um, uh, uh, you know, we are always working on multiple games. Uh, we have mobile games. We have our console games. Um, we often start our next game in, you know, ideation or, or, or research or, or, you know, creating a, an art Bible or something like that. Um, so, and, and as well as games that I can't even mention, obviously. Um, so I don't, I don't know if there was ever a time that we had only one game that we were working on. Um, but yeah, there's, there's stuff coming down, down the line that, um, I can tell you when we stop rolling the cameras, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it for everybody. <laughs> you know what, Ed, I'm going to tell you something that's really funny and people will need to pick up on this. Whenever you get asked questions specifically, that could be spoilery. Your, your face actually changes. Um, it becomes more serious. Like your eyebrows actually come down and you start looking a little more focused. I'm dead serious. I yeah. saw it just I now and I, I didn't, I, I didn't you. recognize it. I want people to go back and look at this. It's really funny. Anytime it touches on spoiler stuff, all of a sudden your heavy face goes from like this to like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's real serious. It is real, yeah. real. Yeah, I got, I got to be caught. I got to be cautious. Sometimes you get a little slip of the tongue, and all of a sudden, you know, there's anything that. you say or do, Ed. It's dangerous, man. Yeah. I don't but, want anything trending. No, well, if Mortal Kombat is trending and it's not revealing anything, then that's okay. Um, you know, another part of Mortal Kombat's legacy is obviously the movies and you talked about how you were so excited when you saw them use Sonya's leg grab in the original Mortal Kombat movie. Can you talk, I, I got to imagine, did you guys ever think that Mortal Kombat would be made into a movie or had hoped that when you were creating this game? I know that there were ties to Jean-Claude Van Damme that didn't happen. And he was a movie star um, during that era. He still is, if you ask me, but um, you know, did you think that you Mortal Kombat would be a movie? Yeah, I was, I was positive from the very no, no, no idea. Um, the 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 um, you know, there, there's a few steps with Mortal Kombat over the years that that we have to kind of give credit to. Um, uh, Acclaim Entertainment when they did the first Mortal Kombat game, they made Mortal Monday. They they put you know, I remember them showing me the videotape of of the commercial. You know, they got the Mortal Kombat and, and iconic, the right? And and, and I remember turning to them. This is at CES, give you an idea of how there was no E3 at the time. This was like when CES was uh and um and I turned to them, they showed me it, and I said, you know, I think you guys are betting a little too hard on this game. Like, you know, it's 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 you're you're it's not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna live up to what you're expecting. And and you know, exceeded their expectations, but who who could predict that? And the same thing with the um the production team that made the first Mortal Kombat movie. I was like, I, I was literally saying, you are really overestimating this, <laughs> how appealing this thing is. It's it's you know, I had no idea, you know, like we're we're in the middle of it. So we had no idea of of how big it had gotten. And I was just warning them. I said, you know, you, you better, you better make sure you know what you're doing. But between acclaim and the the producers of the first movie they really stuck their neck out and they helped elevate mortal Kombat into kind of popular culture the, the, no doubt um there was there was there was lightning that they contributed to i think that that's amazing i mean i those are steps that people to your point overlook right we're so focused in on the game and you guys are focused on the game that there's there is this kind of machine that has to happen around the game to yeah. elevate it to the levels that it gets to right it, yeah we were we were so busy working on the arcade games that you know the movies came along and all that stuff we had our heads down for years 
just getting the next game out and you know beating the beast and it wasn't until like mk4 or something that i i personally looked back and i was like you know wow this thing is really getting big you know <laughs> and, it, and it had already had like a couple of movies out and um and it, it just didn't register to me until long after everybody else knew that it was big that was amazing so ed um before we wrap up thank you so much for your time are you you don't have to tell me what's actually happening but could we potentially see any type of like announcements around the actual 30th anniversary at all or are you planning on doing something or even putting something on your twitter or anything like that um we as nether here's the space getting serious again guys just to let you know here's the space we, getting serious again <laughs> we as uh as nether realm and warner brothers i'm sure we will do something to celebrate it i've been doing you know just my own little videos but that's not i don't consider that like an official a thing um i can't tell you if it's going to involve a announcement for a future game or something like that but certainly there will be some amount of an acknowledging of it uh, a celebration of it um you know probably have some fun with it and um it'd be weird if we didn't on the 30th anniversary so yeah i i totally agree so to that i say congrats with a k ed amazing <laughs> it's been amazing and honestly there's there's nothing that tells me we can't do it for another 30 years let's i'll be long dead by then but i don't know i think you out. you're still gonna be around bro you will still be around <laughs> so will i so ed thank you so much for your time and just honestly uh awesome to celebrate and just talk about and really look back at mortal Kombat for 30 years this is great yeah thank thank you for having me it was yeah like i said it's it was it's, it's been a lot of fun we're still really busy um and um you know you and I text and stuff like that, but, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get lunch or dinner or something like that one of these days. So sounds good. All right. Thanks, Ed. All right. Thank you, man.